Which resume would you choose to give to the interview? Resume number one, resume number two, or resume number three? It's hard to spot the difference at first. In fact, the formats all look very similar, but if you zoom into the project section, they're a little bit different, and recruiters will actually be able to spot these micro differences. If you picked resume number three, then you're on par with what most recruiters would think as well. You're more likely to be favored for an interview if you made something that 25 people used, but it's something simple, like a voice-activated calculator hosted in the cloud, versus a really complex stock picker algorithm that's hosted on something that no one really knows about or cares about. So that being said, let's get into the three types of projects you have to have on your resume in order to get a second look from a recruiter. Just pick a cloud, any cloud. No, 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 not that cloud, not that cloud. If you don't have work experience on your resume, then it's super vital to have a basic understanding of the cloud in your personal projects. This will skyrocket your resume to the front of the list. The project itself can be anything, but using additional resources like a Kubernetes cluster, a virtual machine, setting networking rules for your application, and much more will show that you have an understanding of how things work in the industry, especially since software engineers are now expected to take on the role of a DevOps and infra engineer anyways. Thankfully, using something like Azure is actually pretty easy. Let's say I'm building a language learning flashcard app that's hosted on Azure. We can use tools like ChatGPT to walk us through the steps for this process. I don't always follow everything that ChatGPT says to a T, but it's very helpful in organizing the entire process for you. Okay, so on to the back end. I just called this a superhero flashcard game, and I've actually just copy pasted the Python code that I got from ChatGPT. We've imported Flask, which this platform actually does for you. It's pretty cool. And I'm just hard coded in database just to make sure that it's up and running. Yeah, this platform, if you haven't checked it out, has some really cool stuff that you can use. It has deployments, authentication, database, object storage, Postgres, SQL, console, debugger, and a lot more. And beep boop beep, here is the front end. Again, copy pasta from ChatGPT. You don't have to put that much effort into it. Just make sure you can connect everything at the end of the day. So it's good practice just to understand what all of that is. There's also some pricing tiers, so make sure that you choose the free resources. And there you go. We have a simple application running using resources on the cloud, and we even deployed it so that others can use it too. This is actually a mini version of what a real application would look like in the industry. And don't worry if you don't know how to set things up. Just play around with the tools and see what you can do. Experiment a bit. Again, employers love to see that you've taken initiative on using these tools that are used in the industry all on your own and implementing them into your personal projects. Now for bonus points, try to get other people to use it and show what kind of impact you made. Okay, so how would we word something like this on our resume? So let's take a look at resume number three, because this is where we've added the information into our project. So this goes along with our language learning flashcard app, developed backend services with Flask to handle CRUD operations for flashcard translations. Here I'm just talking about what we implemented with what technology. We're also talking about storing the data in Cosmos DB and then quantifying that. We're handling over 100,000 flashcards and user interactions. We're also enabling personalized language learning experience that improved the user retention rates by 40%. So that's the impact part of this. For the second type of project, you want to make sure you know how to do two things. Use a database and set up authentication. These can be mixed and matched, but understanding how to store data is super vital. For example, you have your relational and non-relational databases. Relational databases are made up of uniform information, while non-relational databases can have random JSON objects with all different kinds of values. It's up to you to understand when to use each kind, learning the search time and the creation of both items, etc. One database I came across was convex. This is super easy to use for beginners and it had a pretty easy setup process too. Just to show you guys how easy it is to set up the convex database, we're going to go ahead and try their quick start. So in the beginning, you do have to install a few things like Node and NPM. So just make sure you go through the instructions there. I've already gone ahead and done that. I've also already cloned the project and there's instructions for that as well. And then you can get started with running their demo app. Their demo app is basically a chat application where you can type in messages and then see how it gets stored in the database. So if we look at the database, you can see the messages that are already displayed on the chat. And then if we type in a new message, we can see that it also gets stored in the database. So it's a very quick setup and turnaround for using this demo application. 
So now I'm just gonna set up this basic database integration with our flashcard app that we were talking about before. So we have no data in our database yet. And this is what the code looks like so far. Again, don't worry about it being too complicated. We have a messages file, which will actually hold our functions. And one thing we're gonna actually use to insert and delete values from our convex database is called a mutation. So you can see here that we already have a mutation to send values to the database, which will be our English and Greek translations. By the way, there's a ton of documentation on convex on how to actually implement this. So what I've done is I've created an empty table. Now, when we type in the English and Greek translations into the chat, it'll populate our table and also add those values to the database. And there we go. Well, let's add a few more values. And now you can see our database is populated with several values. But what if I wanted to click on one of the values in the table and delete an item from the database? How do we add that? Well, as I said before, we can just use a mutation. So I'm gonna add a new mutation to our messages file. And this time it'll delete it based on the value of that ID. And of course, we're gonna have to actually delete it on the onClick function within our app.tsx file. Okay, so now for the grand finale, let's go ahead and run the application and make sure it works. So when we click on a value, it's actually being deleted from both the table and the database. So again, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. When you want to show recruiters that you know how to integrate your applications with the database, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is what you need to do in order to showcase those skills. The cool thing about Convex is that it has real-time collaboration. So you can build apps that synchronize data across multiple users instantly, such as collaborative editing tools or live dashboards. It also has a serverless backend and automatically handles the infrastructure for you. Lastly, it also uses an automatic data sync. You can simplify app development with real-time data sync across users, whether you're working on a chat app or a multiplayer game. This is something that I recommend for people that want to play around with data and get a better understanding of how storage works, while also making some pretty sophisticated models. It's a great resume booster without having to put too much work into learning something new. I've also added some info about it in the description below. As for the authentication, it's really important to know how to secure your controllers so that random people aren't accessing it on the internet. We can just use the following in Azure again. I've actually linked this video in the description below if you want to watch the entire thing and set up your own authentication. And here's how we might put together the database and auth part on our resumes so that again, recruiters think that we're viable candidates for interviewing. All right, next up is adding using a database and authentication to your resume. So we're gonna look at this grocery inventory availability platform on resume three. So right now we're architecting a secure multi-tenant grocery inventory platform that supports over 3,000 active users. Supporting 3,000 active users as a personal project is a huge impact. You also leveraged Convex DB, and that's the technology that we used for today. For the third project, we want to integrate AI into it. We can still use technologies from the previous examples mentioned, like Azure, Convex DB, but the main focus of the next project should be AI oriented. Now, this shouldn't be something difficult to implement. It's mostly there to show that you know how to integrate your microservices with AI tools. Okay, so let's go back to the Azure example and add to our language learning flashcard app. Again, I'd recommend having a third separate project on your resume. For example purposes, we're just going to use the project that we've already built. And of course, this is how you would add it to your resume. And just like last time, we're gonna use ChatGPT to set up the steps. We're gonna take a look at Azure Machine Learning, and we're gonna use pretty much the same backend and front end, which is why we're just gonna build on top of the app we already have. So in this version of the app, we're actually gonna use Azure Cognitive Services and Azure Translator. So this way we can actually translate the word and then also check the pronunciation based on the audio file that we upload. So AI in Azure is actually pretty comprehensive. They have a ton of AI Azure services. We're gonna actually focus on the translator. The translator can translate more than 100 languages and dialects, and it's really as easy as connecting to a database. It's pretty much the same thing. So after setting it up, they actually have examples of code snippets that you can use in your APIs to access this translator from Azure. Okay, so I really wanted to show you guys this functionality. After setting up the translator, you can try it out and it actually auto detects the language that you are typing in and translates it into the language of your choice. So in this case, I'm choosing Spanish, but then I also tried it in Greek and I just typed out a sentence. It's really cool because you can see the request on the bottom left, the response on the bottom right, and then in their UI, you can see how they've translated. This is perfect for a flashcard translator app, so I'm totally going to use it. 
The reason this is so important to have on your resume is probably pretty obvious. Everyone is using AI, and it's the new tool that engineers have to utilize in order to show that they can integrate libraries into their microservices that rely on LLMs. It just shows that you're an early adopter, or at least an adopter of new tech. Oh, and don't forget, using ChatGPT to create steps for us throughout this whole process also counts as using AI. Just make sure to critically think about the information that AI gives you before using it. And of course, this is how we would add AI to our resume. Resume. So here, of course, I've called it the Translator and Pronunciation Feedback app, and I've added in parentheses AI Enhance just to make it seem a lot more interesting. We implemented Azure Cognitive Services for speech to text, enabling users to receive pronunciation feedback and improved pronunciation accuracy for 45% over 80% of users. We also integrated Azure Translator. So it's really important to show that you used Azure services to set up your AI. So you're not reinventing the wheel, you're using something that already exists. Exists. And again, you're showing the impact. Improved accuracy by 45% for 80% of users and also provided real-time translations for over 20,000 words across multiple languages. You also improved the speed and accuracy by 35%. So in all honesty, I didn't write a conclusion to this video just because I spent so much time trying to craft perfect resume to show you guys and also just have really solid examples for what you can put on your resume as projects moving into the industry. I think it's really important to have these two major aspects I told you about, the impact and also the type of technology that's industry standard technology. Recruiters will eat that up and they will love to see that sort of thing on your resume. So make sure you have a few examples of that and have fun with the process. Again, it doesn't have to be something really complex. It can be a very simple application. Use AI, use ChatGPT to help you build the steps to build the app in the first place and work smarter, not harder. That's how it is in the industry today. And even in my job, we're not expected to work super, super, super long hours. We're expected to work smarter, integrate services quickly and utilize what we have at our disposal rather than reinventing the wheel. So just remember that when you're writing your resume and good luck.